today what we're talking about on what's relevant is we're going to look at sources of sources of noise we're going to look at uh, signals that are non-ideal things that come into systems how do we deal with them how do we get rid of them what are some things we need to consider in our designs when it comes to dealing with noise and systems and the fact that well in a, in a real world environment there there's noise there's problems there's issues now what exactly does that mean silence well, of course, we're talking about electrical noise, talking about uh, random signals that interfere with the things that we want to be going on. And the reality is that any circuit that does useful work is going to generate noise in a system. The reason we care about that is one of two things. A, the real world is noisy in an electrical sense. Um, there's going to be all sorts of uh, current and voltage fluctuations that are going to exist in the system that you're in the area where your system is operating. Um, we're all familiar with a piece of device that has that FCC part 15 compliance check that has to be done if you want to sell anything in the United States that has to be working correctly um, and be proven to be working correctly and of course we have the same issue in the military world as well sure sure now there are uh, different things that uh, can come up uh, when it comes to noise like uh, you we can have things that uh, have different signal characteristics and with those different signal characteristics we can often uh, have whether it be power supplies or analog circuits or digital circuits, uh, these different things can all, can uh, they, they all have uh, different types of sensitivities, they're susceptible to different things, but really there we, we want to make sure that we are being uh, considerate of what the different considerations are, right? Yeah, and you definitely need to make sure that you deal with this early on in your design. If you wait till the end and then figure out that it's going to be a problem in a real world environment, it's going to be a lot harder to deal with those issues at that point in the design process. Um, when you were looking at something like power supplies, they of course can be sources of noise in the sense that switching power supplies generate lots of current spikes and things like that. They could be carried back upstream to other systems and they can also be really susceptible to noise. We want to make sure that a good power supply works to block the noise that might be coming from other systems and from passing that on to the system that we're trying to build and make it work properly. Sure, systems sort of like uh, on an aircraft bus, we could have all sorts of different systems working together, electronic warfare, uh, things that have to do with flight control, and those things have all their own considerations. They're trying to isolate themselves from other pieces of equipment, right? Right, and exactly. The mill standard 461 and 464 checks are put in place to make sure that designers can build a design with confidence that the environment they create is going to have a limited amount of noise that's been regulated by that system coming into them and that's done by virtue of making sure that every piece of system that's put on that aircraft meets a specific requirement so then everybody knows what they're going to be dealing with same thing true for shipboard airborne whatever sure and there are often things that have to be considered for example with power supplies there's there's input filtering uh, they, they need to uh, have input filtering on the power supplies. We can uh, we we know that uh, when it comes to switch mode converters, for example, we need to be very considerate of uh, what kind of noise is being generated, especially when you have multiple different converters on one power supply to design right. Yeah, especially if you have you know anything that has changes in frequency or edges are really big sources of noise, and you want to make sure if you have a lot of different changes in edges that you either keep them in sync or force them to never line up because if you get multiple converters that all happen to periodically line up together then you'll get a big inrush of current and that'll be a lot harder for your input filtering and capacitors to deal with. Sure you have all this fun beat frequencies that can come up. Oh dealing yeah it with can really ruin a design in a hurry. Sped, spread spectrum clocks dealing with you know other things that are going on trying to make things are so they're separated out and synchronized and kept apart forcibly in a design right? Sure. You know, if you look at the aspects of a, of, a, of, a, of a board or a system, you typically have power supplies, digital circuits, analog circuits, and they each have their own sources and susceptibilities to noise, and you want to make sure that each of them are handled appropriately. Sure, sure. Uh, even in digital designs, digital designs, they, uh, we're dealing with what we're often thinking about is very sharp edges. So uh, when we're, we have those things, we need to be considerate of. Uh, you know, how quickly is that signal actually changing? What sort of frequency components in that Fourier sensor are we actually dealing with and introducing in our system? Uh, and, and that's something that uh, in order not only to deal with what can be a very harsh mathematical type of uh, frequency being I introduced, we, we also need to think about, well, what do we do in a system where we have a lot of digital signals going around? Uh, what, what do we consider when we think about things like uh, grounding and decoupling of digital systems? Well, you definitely want to make sure that you have good current path to ground in any sort of a digital system. If you want a digital system to do useful work, you've got to 
put clocks into it and clocks cause problems. You can do controlling it by controlling the noise levels by uh, reducing clock speeds by, uh, if you're leaving the chip, by controlling the slew rate of bus signals that are going across systems. Um, but definitely, you, you know, you got to pay attention to bringing your uh, decoupling capacitors really close to the chip, good ground planes, good uh, system grounding of your board, um, and then keeping that ground away from analog grounds, for example, that might be much more susceptible to the current ripples that are going to be part of a. But if I have analog system. and digital ground, why, why, why do I care? What's, why should there be a difference? What am, I, what am I trying to achieve by having separate grounds? Oh, well, you keep the current loops away from the other. So the current loops that happen in the digital system um, will stay inside the ground plane of the digital ground area, mm -hmm. and they'll stay outside the ground plane of the analog area. Mm -hmm. You still want those two to be referenced together, so you you know, you can couple them together. Uh, often we used an inductive filter or something like that to bring the two points together, but you don't want any current to cross between the two. So separation of those two systems helps isolate the noise for between one and the other. Sure, sure. And also on PCBs, we, we want to be considerate of our ground topology. Like how do we actually bring those together? In? Especially we have more than two grounds, right? There's a lot of things that can go on inside of those considerations. Oh yeah, and if you have um, you know multiple analog systems, even multiple digital domains, you can split those out again to isolate the noise from each one of them from crossing over into the other area. And so as you look at each of those, you have to make sure that if you want the ground points to be equal uh, between each of those different connected systems that you make sure that you link them together in the appropriate way and you really got to be careful of where you have a communications bus between one and the other that you're not introducing you know current loops or ground noise paths back through communications buses that you're trying to keep uh, isolated domains in. And that brings up another idea like why would we want to uh, think about uh, shortening the length of traces or shortening the length of cables or uh, keeping, especially with communication at any high frequency, why, why do we not want to really have long traces for sensitive signals? We definitely didn't, we kind of skipped over at the fart, but noise, you know, kind of comes in both conducted where you're creating currents and, and uh, voltage changes within a particular wire, but the, the great part about electronics is that when you create changes in current and voltage on a wire, that that also can couple into free space via the rules that you normally use for positive effects in transmitters and receivers, sure. but in a system that's operating, uh, that can also become a negative effect and actually radiate energy through free space mm -hmm. where there's not even wires connected. And longer wires, longer traces means lower frequencies, typically more energy can get coupled between the two systems. And uh, whenever we're, we're thinking about traces, we can, or cables, we can often think of them as uh, antennas, right? I mean, we, we have these antennas just floating around everywhere. They're cued and tuned for all sorts of wonderful frequencies. Accidental, which, accidental, accidental antennas. Accidental, accidental antennas. The antennas that, are, that we don't want to be antennas, right? Correct. So those are, those are things that can be quite difficult now. Uh, Silas mentioned things like 461 and 464, and uh, there are things like radiated and conducted emissions. And uh, dealing with those things in the designs that we're dealing with in our domain, uh, that's something that uh, Duotech provides some capabilities for when it comes to uh, designing with these things in mind, as well as uh, providing test planning, going through the process of, well, how do you qualify these designs for an aer aerospace or mill environment? Now, w what does Duotech do in that realm? Uh, well, we've obviously taken several designs through the process. Um, we've, we've been to the labs, we've uh, had experience reviewing the specifications, preparing test plans, adapting them to your particular environment, uh, looking at the requirements from the platform and the specification and merging those together to create a cohesive test plan. Um, and then being able to look at the design and, and provide insight into the fact, you know, where are the weak spots? Where are going to be the difficulties that you're going to see? Um, and how can those be addressed at any point in the design to help improve the performance of your system? Now, if you'd like to know more about this, uh, go to our website, duotechservices.com, and you can see in the hardware design and other technical services, uh, these are things that uh, we do. And if you have uh, issues, problems, or questions that you'd like to answer, or designs that uh, really uh, aren't meeting the requirements when it comes to dealing with the real-world effects of noise, visit our website, give us a call, or uh, follow us on Twitter uh, at duotechserve.